Hello and welcome back everyone. So in the previous lecture on endodontic microbiology, we learned about how a vital pulp defends itself from a bacterial attack and also how the bacteria eventually gain access to the pulp. And today we will be discussing more about the pathogenicity. So as discussed, once the bacteria overpower the defense of the pulp and gain access to the pulp, they will eventually cause pulpal necrosis. Once the pulp is dead, bacteria can rapidly multiply and establish an infection in the necrosed pulp. So as you can see, the bacteria cause infection in the pulp and then divide rapidly once the pulp has undergone necrosis. Here an important question arises, why do bacteria establish an infection once the pulp has undergone necrosis? Why can't they just establish an infection before that? For this you need to understand what is an infection. So infection in very simple words is essentially the rapid uncontrolled division of bacteria or any other microorganisms, for example viruses, fungi, etc. But for this to happen, the microorganism must have two important things. First, they must overpower the defenses of the body. Because only after overpowering the defenses of the body, they can successfully establish an infection. Otherwise, the host defenses will wipe them out. And secondly, they must have a good supply of nutrients and other essentials required for their division. If neither of these two factors are available, then the microbes that have attacked will eventually die off. So keeping these things in mind, there are a number of reasons why bacteria can establish an infection in a necrosed pulp. First, the necrotic pulp provides a warm, moist environment that is filled with nutritious contents that the bacteria can feed upon and multiply. And secondly, because of the necrosis of the pulp, the oxygen supplied to the pulp is cut off and hence the necrotic pulp provides a very favorable anaerobic environment for the growth of anaerobic bacteria once the already present oxygen stores start to deplete within the pulp. Remember there are two main types of bacteria depending upon the need of oxygen for their growth. One are the aerobic bacteria that require oxygen for their division and the other are the anaerobic bacteria that don't require oxygen for their division. So at the start of an endodontic infection, the already present oxygen stores of the necrotic pulp are depleted by the aerobic bacteria. Once the oxygen stores of the pulp are depleted, then this provides a favorable environment for the growth of anaerobic bacteria. And hence the anaerobic bacteria eventually show domination. Thirdly, the bacteria in the necrotized pulp are also protected from our host defenses because of the lack of circulation in the already dead pulp. So as you can clearly see, the bacteria are protected from the host defenses and also have a good supply of nutrients and hence the bacteria can establish an infection in the necrosed pulp. Nutrients to the bacteria for their further division after the initial attack also comes from various other sources. Bacteria feed upon four important nutrients once inside the pulp which help them to rapidly divide and multiply. These four important nutrients are the necrotized pulp tissue, the proteins and the glycoproteins that are also available along with the necrosed pulp. Components of the saliva that as previously discussed are easily available as the pulp has already been exposed to the environment of the oral cavity. And finally the bacteria also use the byproducts of metabolism of other bacteria. And therefore in conclusion all of these factors make the necrotic pulp a very fertile area for bacterial growth. And hence the bacterial division and infection inside the necrotic pulp becomes very easy once the pulp has undergone necrosis. Now another question that you might have studied in your pathology is that how do bacteria colonize? Uh, this question is very important for you to understand for studying dental pathology as well as endodontic anatomy. So the dominant pattern of colonization that most bacteria use is by the formation of something that is known as the biofilms. And these biofilms adhere to the root canal walls. Biofilms is the main form in which bacteria exist in nature. It is defined as a sessile multicellular microbial community characterized by cells that are firmly attached to a surface. The surface in this case of root canal infection is the root canal walls. And these small microbial communities are immersed in a self-produced matrix of extracellular polymeric substance or otherwise known as the EPS. So in simple words, biofilms is essentially the bacteria attached to one another, forming a film-like structure. This film-like structure is immersed in a fluid or a matrix which is known as the EPS. And this biofilm is also attached to a surface. 
Now, why do bacteria do this? Why do they have to be in the form of biofilms and not exist as an alone entity? It is because biofilms allows the bacteria to have improved communications among different species that are infecting altogether, allowing for a better metabolic cooperation and protection against exogenous threats. Because usually there is not a single species of bacteria infecting a host, there is usually a combination of different bacterial species infecting at once. There may however be a dominance of a single species of bacteria in a specific infection, but many different species are present that are causing a certain infection. So biofilms allows for a better communication and interaction between these different species of bacteria. This better communication eventually results in better protection against host defenses and also provides a cumulative additive pathogenetic effect on the host. Not only these biofilms are attached along the walls of main canals, but they may also spread to the apical ramifications, littoral canals and the isthmus. And any effective endodontic therapy requires effective antimicrobial strategies in order to eradicate these biofilms and the bacteria residing within. So elimination of these biofilms should be the main target for any effective endodontic therapy. So this was all for today's lecture. I will try my best to complete the endodontic microbiology in my next lecture. Uh, in my next lecture, we will be talking about the types of endodontic infections and which organisms are associated with those infections. Till then, take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Stay safe and goodbye.